I mean, look, at, I would risk my life, my family's life, went all over the world, dealt with some of the most shadiest characters in the world because of Donald Trump, because I was so loyal to him, because I believed he was honest and truthful and we were trying to do good for our country. And look who he turned out to be. I mean, and that's why I'm trying to scream at the top of my lungs for people to realize that these elections are not about policies. These elections are not about if your eggs are more or, or taxes are higher or the gas. These elections are about saving our democracy from a dictatorship. That's what I'm trying to tell this country. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Coalition of the Same. And today is part one of the Lev Parnas interview. We're going to learn about the real dangers of democracy, what an access for is, and we're going to learn about the MAGA shakedown. So stay tuned, buckle up, and let's get to work. Everybody, I'd like to welcome Lev Parnas, my good friend, um, and somebody who I got to know. Gosh, when was it? When did I first meet you, Lev? Was it a couple years ago now? Uh, yeah, I'm it's been a it's over a year, yeah. definitely. Like about a definitely. year and a half. Yeah. yeah, definitely okay. over a year. And I got to visit you in your hometown. I'm yeah. not going to tell anybody where that is. Um, so, and, you know, of course, the trees behind you are no clue. And uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when I first met you, I was sort of stunned by your honesty and really your stories. And I and I want to ask you a question. We get started this way on the show. When did you first get? The best word I have is, and I don't know if anybody's asked you this, when did you get first recruited um, by Rudy or by the team on this Hunter Biden project uh, that you've talked so much about? Yeah, uh, so I think uh, the, I, I would say the actual first recruitment came uh, in November. Uh, it was uh, after we, we were actually at the Grand Havana Room. It was right after the set we were celebrating the Santa's win for the uh, 2020, 2018 uh, uh, governor, uh, he won the governor of Florida. We were just finished traveling the country, uh, uh, supporting Trump candidates all over the place. Uh, and uh, we were in the Grand Havana room, just talking shit. And all of a sudden, he gets a phone call from uh, one of his private uh, investigators, Bart, Bart Schwartz was his name. And Rudy gets up and starts talking to him. And uh, you could see that it was like a very uh, interesting conversation because Rudy's face like, expressions kept going like whoa like, you know faces and like that after he got off he, he did what he usually would do he sat down grabbed a drink and, and his cigar and would update me and Igor basically on everything he spoke about uh, but the difference in this meeting uh, compared to the other ones we would just usually listen to the stories or the conversation Rudy spoke about but this time uh, we got involved because uh, it was had to do with Ukraine and we knew a lot of the characters and the things that Rudy was talking about and all of a sudden my partner Igor whips out uh, a video of that infamous video that we all now see where Joe Biden t fired, tells the, uh, to fire the prosecutor otherwise we won't give you a billion dollars and at that moment, Rudy exploded. His eyes lit up, he stood up, he says, we got you. I mean, something I'm paraphrasing, like we got you, Joe, or we got him now. And that was, I think, the the moment when we got recruited because right after that, uh, Rudy basically asked us if we could go and find Victor Shokin. And we said, yes, we could do that. Then we had a conversation where Rudy told me he is now going to represent us. Uh, that was like, because I said to Rudy, I said, if we go to Ukraine, I mean, People are not just going to speak to us. Who the hell is Love and Igor to go try to find Victor Shokin? Uh, he turned around and said, well, now I'm going to represent you. I'm your lawyer, just like I. So I only represent you and I represent the president. And it was even a funny moment because he asked us to give him like a $20 bill to make it official that now he represents us. And that well, was I'll tell you, that's the, first time, yeah, the first time he was got recruited. Oh, that's <laughs> very professional. Very professional. And, <laughs> and what was Igor's last name, Lev? Uh, Fruman. Yep. Fruman. So yeah. the reason I'm going to ask you some of this is because the context we have on this is probably more than anybody on earth as we're talking about yeah. this. So that's why I think it's going to be interesting. I'm going to try to make it simple for the audience. I know you already did, but really it was a private investigator or somebody, you know, well, you know, Bart Schwartz who had called and it was you and Igor Fruman and Giuliani sees the video of Biden and based on the information that he got, either he was a true believer that Joe was somehow gotten or he knew this was a great way to go after the presumptive front runner at the time in November of 2018 to go after Joe Biden. And I guess for you in knowing you 
Knowing how solid you are on receipts, I love the Lev Remembers hashtag. Um, and I also love what you're doing on social media now and the receipts that you're bringing and the evidence that you're bringing. Take me back to the Lev of, of November 2018. I know we've already discussed this, but I think the audience would love to know. What really made you buy in to this mission? I know that you know, you're know you close to somebody in power and Rudy Giuliani. Um, you have an incredible background, uh, where you're from, what you know. Um, you're so personable. Uh, people automatically feel comfortable around you. And I want to let you know that. Um, Thank but you. what really attracted you to this as soon as you heard, here we are in November 2018, as soon as Rudy says, I got you, what attracted you to that task? You know, the Joe Hunter Biden, yeah. you know, uh, chronicles. You know, it, it's a great question, but it, it wasn't, it, that was like the tipping tone, but it was a, a perfect storm that, you know, uh, the, that, that just a lot of things co collided together to cause that action. First of all, you have to remember that I was, before I even got close to Rudy Giuliani, I was very close to Donald Trump uh, since 2015. I was on his campaign and with him with, throughout that and at every rally and, you know, what we were his top donors and you know so uh you know i had already a relationship with trump and i was already a hardcore trumper i was already in the cult i was already up there in the top you know loyalist supporters top donors and so i already was drinking the kool-aid uh, at that point also at the time uh you have to remember that prior to even this happening with rudy i had already several conversations on, not only with donald trump about getting rid of the ambassador to ukraine but also uh, pete sessions had me go on a mission and sent me a letter a private letter to deliver to trump where he wanted to bypass secretary pompeo to get rid of the, uh, the ambassador of ukraine Rudy Ivanovich. so i was already kind of involved but i was still involved as a donor as somebody was that, that trying to help and just giving things that I heard, but that at this uh, in particular meeting, everything collided to where we became not just donors and not just people that we're talking about. Now we were actually tasked to go do something and find Victor Shokin, which would be the key to. Uh, the, originally, that was a smoking gun. If we could find Victor Shokin, we thought uh, that that would explode everything and it would uh, expose the corrupt Biden family, which Rudy was on. You also have to keep in mind that prior to this, unbeknownst to me, Rudy was already, uh, not only Rudy, but Devin Nunez, John Solomon, Rudy, they were already pushing information and looking into Ukraine uh, going back from 2016 because they were trying to push that the Democratic servers were in Ukraine, that the uh, Paul Manafort ledgers were false. So there was a lot of already uh, hatred and looking into corruption and trying to blame Ukraine instead of Russia for the meddling in the 2016 election. And then when this came about, it just was the tipping and basically that, you know, that's the straw that broke the camels back in their view, where they switched from everything and made Joe and Hunter Biden the main thing and the gotcha moment. My goodness. And just to let everybody know, John Solomon, former Fox reporter, is now on this ridiculous news network, uh, pretty much a propaganda peddler, would you say, um, Lev? And then um, we have Devin Nunes, former congressman. Um, Pete Sessions, former congressman. So just to let people Aaron, know. He, uh, so he's current. Right. He was sitting on, he was actually, Pete Sessions is sitting on the oversight committee that I was right. testifying. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pete's actually there now. Yeah, again, yeah, Pete's there. <laughs> um, so, I, I, you know, I've met Pete and his, uh, his wife. Um, but also, if you could, because you're the best at this, why is Shokin so important? Why don't you explain to the audience who Victor Shokin is really quickly, and then why is he important to this, and why was Rudy so excited to get with Shokin? Yeah, so Viktor Shokin uh, was he was the ex-general uh, prosecutor of Ukraine, and he was the one uh, there during the time uh, towards the end when Hunter Biden joined the board of Burisma. Uh, Viktor Shokin uh, was the gentleman that uh, was in the video that uh, Joe Biden uh, mentioned to say to get fired. So Viktor Shokin became the key point why Giuliani wanted to see him, because Viktor Shokin, after get, uh, getting fired, went on a campaign saying that uh, against the, that the deep state, uh, that the Bidens, the Obamas, the Clintons were, you know, using Ukraine as a corruption. That's why they wanted to get him out of there. And he filed a lawsuit in the world court. And with the video, Giuliani really thought to himself that, you know, if we could get Shokin come here and testify under oath, that basically Hunter Biden did, did something corrupt in Ukraine and uh, he caught him and there was an investigation and Joe Biden fired him to cover it up, that would be the end of the Bidens. So that way, that's why Victor Shokin was such a key person in that. 
I love how quick you explain these things. And, you know, me and you have uh, had a lot of conversations. As you know, I did the forensics on the Hunter Biden laptops or the laptop yeah. data, but also yeah. laptops and um, and also some other things. And, you know, I find it amazing, Lev, as we've talked and looking at going back to the past, you said something that was really, really, really profound. And I, and I want people to realize what Lev has done and where Lev has come from is that you had known Trump since 2015. And you already felt that you sort of were on Team Trump. I think you had a good relationship oh, with them. Oh, big, mm-hmm. yeah, big time. Yep. And you said, I was already a Kool-Aid drinker and in the cult. So I know we're talking about all these important people, right, that were part of this. Um, it's interesting that you said deep state, also globalist. Uh, you know, we have these words that they like to use. There's always a conspiracy theory. But it seems right. like in November of 2018, based on your relationship with Trump, you really thought there was something here. Just, uh, just um, you know, looking at Rudy Giuliani's excitement, what Bart said, uh, going after Shokin, um, all the people that you were actually related to or knew about, it seems to me at the time that you had sort of gone deep down the rabbit hole of sort of the Trump oh, belief system. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, not only down the rabbit, I was one of the leaders. I truly not only believed, but I pushed the narrative. I mean, I was full force on Trump. I mean, couldn't get any... Any, any more Trumper than I was at that time. That's why I tell people, I mean, they tell me you're this, you're that. I said, you have no idea. You think you're a mega loyalist Trumper. You have no idea how loyal or mega I was and where I was and what I was willing to do. I mean, look, I would risk my life, my family's life, went all over the world, dealt with some of the most shadiest characters in the world because of Donald Trump, because I was so loyal to him, because I believed he was honest and truthful and we were trying to do good for our country. And look who we turned out to be. I mean, and that's why I'm trying to scream at the top of my lungs for people to realize that these elections are not about policies. These elections are not about if your eggs are more or taxes are higher or the gas. These elections are about saving our democracy from a dictatorship. That's what I'm trying to tell this country. Well, I tell you, buddy, I'm um, again, it's it's not just stunning. It is a, it is a tribute to how you actually did a 180 because I'm going to so and I know, again, listeners, if they do want to know more about what happened, you need and, and, and I know this is shameless, but they need to buy Shadow Diplomacy by you um, because there's no way I think on 20 to 40 minute podcasts that we can go into every single specific reference and context of the investigation that Lev was a part of and trying to connect Hunter and Joe right to nefarious business dealings across the globe. Uh, it's a it's a lot of work, but I wanted people to know the names specifically so they could go look them up. And thank you so much for the context on that, because I'm going to jump forward. So November 2018, you get the sort of the go the go order. January of 2019, you send me an incredible video. And I know this is already out in the wind, but I had it a little bit earlier than other people. Um, you sent an incredible video of you and Giuliani in a meeting on a phone call. And I want you to, so we're going to do this January, 2019. We're going to leap forward to Dirt Cash and Fur Cash. If you want to go there to some of the people that, you know, um, sure. that might be that are actually connected to the Russian government. Um, but then I want to go into you personally, right. And where your 180 degree turn was. So this is how we're going to go down this line. And, and first of all, I want to start in January, 2019, you sent me an incredible video. And if you want to explain that video real quickly, you sent me a snippet sure. of it. I think people would actually get a hell of a buzz if you could explain that very quickly. Yeah, and Denver, I'm, I'm going to release uh, snippets of it. They keep going down, so I'm going to do what, what their, the oversight committee is doing. Instead of giving the whole thing in one blast, I'm going to drip, drip, drip it out so they can enjoy drip it, it out. for the next minute. Uh, it's a 45-minute video, and uh, basically what happened was Victor Shokin, we were trying to get him to come to the United States to bypass the FBI, the DOJ, and go meet with Lindsey Graham directly and give him testimony, a sworn statement. Uh, Maria Ivanovich got word of it and basically put a, 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 sh- a the kibosh on it and wouldn't let Victor Shokin travel to the United States. That's when the whole Maria Ivanovich uh, fire, get, get rid of Maria Ivanovich. Started. Wait a minute, Lev. Are you telling me the Ivanovich firing was completely political because they weren't getting any type of uh, information about the Bidens that they thought they deserved at this point? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, poor, you know, and I apologize. I, po- I apologize to Maria Ivanovich right after it happened. I, I mean, but yeah, she was basically targeted because of her being anti, you know, doing her job and stopping corruption and not allowing, allowing this Russian disinformation to get into the United States. And, and they needed to get rid of her. So that's that was the first thing that, that happened. That was in January when uh, Shokin couldn't then come here. Then he uh, we decided to do a video of us. 
Skype video with him and get his testimony. And that's the snippets that you've seen. And the interesting part about the video is he goes on and talks about so many different things, corruption in Ukraine and Russian Ukrainians, Americans, Democrats, Republicans. He goes into all, all kinds of rabbit holes. But then eventually Rudy gets really tired of, you know, it's like 35 minutes into 40 minutes into the conversation. And he, you know, stops and says, listen, I know it sounds bad. It looks bad. You know, it's not right. But what do they do illegal and criminal kickbacks? Do they take money under the table? Did they take a bribe? And then you hear a little pause and then you hear Victor Shokin's uh, translator say, no, he, they did nothing illegal. But uh, if Victor Shokin would have got a chance to question them, then uh, he would have found something. So it was the same old story that was shifting because there was no investigation. Victor Shokin uh, had no uh, re re relationship to Hunter Biden. He, the relationship Victor Shokin had with Burisma at the time was strictly a business relationship. That's what the general prosecutor's job was at the time. He would you know, find these big companies, go after them, and then they would pay him off and he would stop the investigation. That's why Burisma, like any, a lot of other Ukrainian companies, would constantly get you know, investigations open and closed. But none of it had to do with Hunter Biden. And most of those investigations were prior to even on to Biden, and that's where the. <laughs> so are you are you telling me that I, I, my guess is Giuliani wasn't very happy with that answer from Shokin, and he was not. Do you, he was not, and it is at that time in January of 2019 where you tried to support Giuliani and, and tell me if I'm wrong here. I just want to make sure you know, Lev, I have this correct. Mm -hmm. But my guess is, is that Julie doubled down on wanting to investigate this based on the fact there was nothing. And is that when you had the first introductions or you're seeing the first individuals and you can explain who they are like Durkash and Telezhenko. Is this the first time that you are actually reaching out to them or were they already part of the play by January of 2019? Oh, no, they were not in the play yet, uh, January to, to 2019. So <laughs> interesting things happened uh, to move this thing along. Uh, so, yes, Giuliani wasn't happy with his answer, but the story still gave enough uh, 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 smoke, as they call it, to be able to still keep going down the rabbit hole. But the one interesting thing that Shokin said to Giuliani that kept this thing alive in the very, you know, uh, still a, a way where we were still looking for the truth kind of way, was he said that the truth, the smoking gun, the wire transfers, the bank records where we could prove that Joe Biden got the money are in the general prosecutor's office of Ukraine. And he was not able to take it with him when he left because he got fired. So they're there and they're being covered up by the current general prosecutor and they're there. So and so now we finish the meeting with Shokin and lo and behold, two days later, all of a sudden we get a phone call from the general, the, the, the friend of the general prosecutors of Ukraine, Yuri Lutsenko, saying, wait, we're in New York. Uh, we'd like to meet with Giuliani. <laughs> to, to what a coincidence that must be. Right. Like two days later <laughs> uh, to meet with, with, with the attorney general, Bill Barr. Uh, so, you know, we called Giuliani. Giuliani was like, holy shit. Uh, absolutely. Bring him in because that's who we need. He's the one that could give us the current records. Uh, so we set up the meeting and uh, Lutsenko comes in and it was became a very awkward meeting because Lutsenko comes in with a, the, the perception that he is the general prosecutor meeting with like the ex-prosecutor, you know, Rudy Giuliani and that he was on a mission to meet with the current prosecutor general, uh, Bill Barr. And he wanted to discuss criminality between the Templeton Fund and, and money that was going in from Ukraine to America. <laughs> Had nothing to do with the Bidens or anything else. It was about a real corrupt uh, money laundering scheme that, that was going from Ukrainians to America and then back to Ukraine. So Giuliani stops him right away and says, we're not here to talk about the Templeton Fund. And if he goes, if you want that, he goes, you could hire me and I could help you with that. He goes, but with, well, unless you have direct information that could help us with the Bidens and the corruption and Joe and Hunter Biden, uh, you know, don't waste my time. We have nothing to talk about. And Lutsenko was really taken back. He couldn't understand, you know, in Russian, he would tell me like, wait a second, I'm the general prosecutor of Ukraine. Like, I want to meet Attorney General Bill Barr. Like, what is the problem? So I, re I, I go tell that to Rudy and Rudy's like, look, you want to meet Attorney General Bill Barr? The way things work here, you have to uh, pay a lobbyist and they will get you in there. So you could pay me $200,000 and I will introduce you to Attorney General Bill Barr. So Lutsenko gets taken back again. He's like, what the hell is going on over here? So we stopped the meeting. Uh, Giuliani tells me, listen, go work on him and make sure that, uh, you know, tomorrow he brings us the goods. 
So that evening, I go meet with Lutsenko and you know, and Igor. They get drunk, you know, and Lutsenko's pouring his heart out to me, like he can't believe what just happened. Like you know, he looked up to Giuliani, like he, you know, as his hero, you know, and all this stuff. And here Giuliani's basically shaking him down for two hundred thousand to go meet the Attorney General Barr. And you know, I did my job. I calmed him down. I talked him into it. I explained to him that listen, you know, you know things, how things work all over the world, and this is just how things work in the United States. I mean, you gotta play ball and to get what you need to get. So Mutenko agreed to come the next day. The next day he comes to the office. Now he brings already uh, uh, more of the carrot dangling in front of him. Not facts, not proof, but stuff that had to do with more uh, juicy stuff in the Burisma investigation. He brought us, you know, certain bank records with Hunter's name on it. He brought, you know, he brought us stuff where there was, you know, showed that Hunter that did work for Burisma, and yes, Burisma did, you know, have investigation, but nothing to link them together, and it wasn't, it wasn't like here it is, the smoking gun. You said something about you going to work on them, which is really interesting that you use that term. That's pretty neat that you're trying to work on them for a couple of things, right? To get the information you need, whether it's fake or false. But also, are you telling me that Rudy Giuliani was an access whore and that he liked to uh, oh, actually do pay to play? Oh, that's really interesting, Lev. I tell you. And the reason <laughs> the reason I'm talking about access whores is back in 2005, 2006, I met with the Giuliani group on a data platform we were building um, for a three-letter agency. And that very basis of a data platform is the AI company I have today. And when we actually tracked all the bad actors in J6 and with the forensics, it was that platform we were using that I tried wow. to actually, with the other company, we went to the Giuliani group and the money that they wanted to charge was absolutely outstanding. It was, it was a massive right. amount of money to guarantee oh, contracts. Wow. And, you know, the fact is, is that I actually have personal experience with it. And I just find it amazing. No, I don't. I'm not even surprised at all that, of course, he would charge $200,000 for access. Well, is what you were saying. Denver, he took half a million from us to, to be the face of fraud guarantee. And <laughs> of don't course. forget that. Remember, and never got charged with it. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's there's it's all about the money, isn't it, Lev? And um, yeah. it's really what it goes back to is that Trump winning really did guarantee Rudy Giuliani a financial line for a long time. And the way that he does make money is by peddling access. And if he doesn't have the goods, he can't charge for that access. And Absolutely. I think that put a lot of pressure on him to really go out and try to find things that maybe weren't there. Am I saying that kindly? Um, very, maybe? very kind, very kind, very kind. <laughs> I want to go back to January 2019. Shokin doesn't make him happy. Lutsenko all, all of a sudden shows up. You have to talk them into, you know, continuing their dialogue with Giuliani in multiple levels. And now it seems to me now you start with a new strategy. And is that strategy now to hook into certain people that might or might not be related to the Russian government? Uh, not yet we're getting there, but uh, the important part that I want to also for your viewers to know that happened at that meeting that uh, just so to understand the micromanagement that Trump had over all of this that was going on, because I know he claims, you know, he, he has a memory problem. He doesn't remember who I am. He doesn't remember what happened in Ukraine. So but uh, that uh, during the meeting, Rudy got up and called Trump and got him on the phone. And, and stood in front of Lutsenko and told Lutsenko that Donald Trump is President Trump is very happy that with them pleased with the information that the Ukrainian prosecutor is going to give to them and put his hands up and that blew Lutsenko away basically by Giuliani getting Trump on the phone in front of him and talking about it it put Lutsenko like he Lutsenko went into a daze you could tell right away and then the plan after that was that we were supposed to meet in Poland and the reason Poland is because again everything we were doing had to be shadow underground so the media wouldn't get a track you know Giuliani or me being somewhere so Giuliani was supposed to go to Poland to do an MEK another gig that he was the lobbyist gig that's I don't know how he got away with uh, you know in Poland on behalf of them so Lutsenko met with us in Poland and where we met at a bar and uh, I've never seen two people drink as much in my life. They drink, the bill was eight out over eight thousand dollars <laughs> on bourbon and, and whiskey that they were drinking then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were drinking some Japanese stuff, Hokkaido or Hokkaido. I don't know. You might know better. Oh, they were. Yeah, I mean, uh, so yeah. they were so not the Yamazaki or the Hibiki, right? They were going with the Hibiki. 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 Was it Hibiki? Also, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. It was Hibiki. Hibiki. Sorry, I know. I, I should know my whiskey so well, should I? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were. So they. So they were snorting Hibiki and having a good yeah. old time. Is that what you're? 
saying? Good old, good old time, good old time. And uh, the plan was that Giuliani wouldn't go to Ukraine because the media would be all over it. So he would send me, and Lutsenko would need to get me to Poroshenko because Poroshenko was the president, and he would make, once Poroshenko was on board, then Lutsenko would be willing to open up an investigation, announce it, and do whatever, the, whatever we wanted. So uh, straight from Poland, I went off to Ukraine. Uh, after a couple of days sitting by the phone waiting to get that phone call, eventually I got a call like 11 o'clock at night uh, that there's uh, uh, cars waiting for me downstairs with bodyguards. They took me to the presidential palace where I, we went instead of up, we went four floors down. <laughs> and eventually I met up in this, this uh, crazy room uh, uh, with the President Poroshenko, Yuri Lutsenko, and they were there and uh, we got, had the meeting. The meeting was about three hours. And it was the interesting part of the meeting after all the pleasantries and everything. Once I went into the message that Trump wanted me to give to him by announcing an investigation to the Bidens. And at that time, uh, there were elections going on in Ukraine and Poroshenko was running for re-election. And the carrot that we were dangling was that Trump said that he would come out and fully support Poroshenko for re-election if he were to come out and uh, say that announce an investigation into the Bidens. So Poroshenko looked at me and then he stopped me for a second and said, let me tell you a little story, love. He goes, uh, when I went to the White House, I think it was in 2017 or when he got his visit that he paid for to get through back the channel because Trump wouldn't invite him to come see him in the Oval. When he finally got his way into the White House after his couple of minutes the meeting with Trump, on his way out, he was approached by a Trump staffer that came up to him and said, President Poroshenko, the president, asked if uh, you could do him a favor. Uh, he's going to Pennsylvania next week at a rally, and he would like for you to announce, he would like to announce that uh, Ukraine purchased uh, coal from this Pennsylvania coal company. And Poroshenko looks at him and goes like, oh, okay, like, what do you want me to do? He goes, well, will you, will you purchase the coal? So Poroshenko, he goes, I got taken back a little bit, but you know, I thought maybe this was my way to build my relationship with Trump. So against, even though the coal was more expensive, Poroshenko, and this is all public information, people just don't know about it because a lot of people don't, but if you look into it and Google it, you'll see uh, Poroshenko went and bought the coal, Trump went and made the announcement at the rally to a standing ovation for the crowd, and uh, after that Poroshenko goes, I, I can't even get a phone call with him. He goes, so you want me to now go out and uh, get involved in your corrupt election scheme and this is how he's talking to me and go and put my country in the middle of it and you want me to trust that Donald Trump is going to support me and do it he goes I don't know if I could do that he goes so I'm not saying no and I'm not saying yes he goes I need to take a time out to think about it and that's how we ended our, <laughs> our meeting that was the end of the conversation that was that, the end of the when would the dates so you're talking about the fact that he used the words corrupt election scheme really strikes me uh, the fact that there was, you know, deal making going on based on some not only unsaid uh, quid pro quo, but maybe some specific quid pro quo. When you're looking about Biden, you know, coming on as the strongest contender for the yeah. for, for the presidency on the Democratic side. What yep. date was that? Do you remember the date or the dates generally that you met with Poroshenko uh, uh, in that February. room? No, I remember exactly. It was like between it was the week of February 12th to the between 12th and the 19th around valentine's day that's un unbelievable and had you heard by 2019 so around valentine's day 2019 and i'm trying to remember what i was doing i think i was buying chocolates or something. <laughs> but uh you know but i was i was actually in congress um at that time so you know this is really interesting i've been in congress a month um goodness this is pretty interesting because now I have and the other inter and, and, and the other interesting part well i'm sorry to interrupt you is that bill no, barr okay. just got just came into office january february of 2019 and he gets and he right away gets on uh, uh, uh that we were being looked at as invested because they were already word that we were in ukraine uh, stirring up trying to talk so bill barr starts looking into us around that same time and starts getting detailed accounting of what's going on with me, Giuliani, Ukraine, and all of that. 